Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Soapbox Slam, where I get on my soapbox and I talk about the things that I see going on. Um, this morning, I wanted to get on my soapbox and talk about music. Um, and this isn't necessarily uh, any any slam on any musician or the culture of music in America right now or anything like that. Um, that's not the intent of this soapbox um, or anything like that. Actually, I wanted to get on my soapbox and um, actually kind of give a plug um, for a different genre of music and help people define the genre and explain the genre of music that I have been listening to for the last two years, um, collecting more and more musicians and artists in my catalog of, of musical repertoire, right? Um, so um, the three genres that I listen to the most are um, house music, um, dancehall reggae, and then um, Afrobeats. And Afrobeats or Afropop is something that I just recently in the last two years um, started listening to and um, buying music, um, you know, in, in, uh, music from that genre. Um, and, and it's something that I think that um, a lot more Americans, well, it's actually, it's not something I think. I mean, if you start reading about it or anything like that, Afropop is a um, emerging market in music, uh, particularly changing the landscape of music in, in England and in a lot of Western civilization, uh, European countries. Um, it is uh, becoming more and more popular um, and um, more and more demand for it and uh, a lot of money in Afropop music, um, Afropop, Afro beats. So um, this particular soapbox is going to talk about Afrobeats, um, dancehall reggae, and then house. And then if there's more time, um, we'll see how it goes. Uh, some of the broader, broader um, implications within the the um, Afro pop music, um, and broader implications of why I particularly choose um, these these particular genres more than other genres. Um, before I get into it, I just want to state that um, this will probably be a lengthy, excuse me, a lengthy um, post. Um, it has been a while since I've done a post. I have been uh, working insane hours. I mean, just insane hours. And, um, you know, I, I don't have the luxury or comfort of working close to, to um, my home. So I've kind of relocated and um, and working way, I mean, I'm not even working in Illinois. Um, so, uh, let me just say that, um, I have a wide range of musical taste. Um, I, I listen to anything from classical to country. I listen to, um, reggaeton, salsa, uh, um, you know, house music, uh, regular reggae, dance hall, um, international music, rock, hard rock, um, pop music, um, hip hop and R&B. But if there's any genre, if there's any genre that I gravitate to the most, it would be house music, reggae dance hall, and Afro beats, um, Afro beats, Afro pop. And so I wanted to get on my soapbox and kind of talk about what is Afrobeats and why I'm particularly drawn to it, share maybe some of my thoughts on an emerging musical industry and possibly um, introduce this genre to other people and get other people to start listening to Afrobeats. Um, and, and, and I mean, even, I mean, if I could get other people to listen to the genres that I listen to, um, not to toot my own horn or anything like that, but I think the, um, my preferred genres, um, are rooted in, um, high frequencies, high vibrations, happiness, positive, um, energy, positive dance music, positive, um, perspective of music. Um, so, and, and so if I can introduce that to other people, then, um, I feel like I am spreading joy and, um, spreading goodness in the world. Also, um, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm an older guy 
and people that I went to school with and went to college with, those of you who have kids, especially if you have teenage kids, hey, I'm telling you now, if you wanna be extra, I, hey, I don't believe in being friends with your kids. I believe in being parents. But if you wanna be some kick-ass cool parents, I, I promise you, um, uh, those responsible parents listen to some of the music that I post and um, play that music for your kids. I guarantee you, your kids will be shocked by your um, expansion of um, musical repertoire. So <laughs> having said all that, let's get into it, right? Um, uh, let's see, so where do we start? Afrobeats. Afrobeats is um, also known as Afrofunk, Afro pop, Afro swing. Um, it is uh, generally it is a, um, a a an umbrella term, right? It, it is an umbrella term that is used to um, to identify um, a fusion sound. Okay, and um, so when we say Afro beats and Afro pop, Afro Afro swing, everything else. It's an umbrella term. And the reason why I say it's an umbrella term is because, um, and, and I've done some research on this and everything else. So you have different, different dialect, not di different dialects, different tempos, different patterns of music that come from all over the country of Africa. Um, I mean, just all over. I mean, I, I, when you break it down, you have East Africa, South Africa, and West Africa. These are the regions of Africa that you would find um darker skinned people um and and you know um the 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 what what we in america would identify as where black people come from north africa uh is where the ottoman empire and um and and you know arab people come from um ottoman empire controlled by sumerian people so they have a different tone and color ration to them um, yes, their coloring is a lot closer to mine, but features are more Anglo features or Caucasoidal feature, features. So that's North Africa. But the rest of Africa, certainly um, identifiably what we in America would identify as black. So having said all that, um, Afro, Afro beats is uh, a, a musical genre that emerged actually in the 1960s and made popular and defined by a man named um, Fila Kuti. Okay, now please forgive me if uh, if I don't pronounce um, you know any of these names properly. Um, I, I I would only ask for your forgiveness, and if there are people out there who um, can respond and correct me on how to pronounce some of these names, um, I would appreciate it. Um, but um, I don't necessarily have. Um, a, an African linguistic tongue, or um, uh, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, you know, speak any African languages with an African dialect. So I, I apologize for mispronunciations of names. Um, but nonetheless, um, Afro beats was a, a, a genre that was defined and made popular by a man named Fila um, Fila Kuti. Uh, Fila Kuti is a Nigerian man, and. Um, you know, he is credited with creating this kind of um, Afro punk, Afro funk, Afro beats, Afro pop sound, Afro swing um, sound, and and so he, he this Nigerian man um, took a lot of what they would consider, and, and I have some some contentions with this, but we'll get through this. Um, they had some West African style. It, it, what Afro beats is is it um, it combines or it's a genre defined by West African um, sounds, West African um, musicality combined caveat combined with American funk, jazz, and soul. So it's West African sounds, West African tempos, West African or African. Uh, I, I'm going to take out West African and just consider it African because there are several artists that are not from Nigeria or West Africa that make um, Afro beats or Afro um, pop and they're being attributed to West Africa or Nigeria and, and a genre that has been um, accredited to, to just Nigeria. Um, and I, I think that's a false mis, mis, uh, misleading. 
But nonetheless, it's West African sounds that is fused with American funk, jazz, and soul. Okay. Um, now, it, it, the 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 identifying factors um, are not necessarily instruments per se, um, but the identifying factors that define the genre of Afropop. Um, again, West African sounds with American funk, jazz, and soul, and it uses chanting vocals, very complex rhythms, and percussions. So the 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 um, identifying instrument that would uniquely identify the genre would be percussions, uh, drums, bells, xylophones, percussion instruments. Um, just like one of the identifying instruments in country genre is a banjo, right? Like these are these are things that we say specifically identify a genre, um, you know. And so for African pop or um, Afro pop or Afro beats, uh, percussions would be the predominant instrument that is used to define the genre. Um, but again, also what defines the genre are, are chanting vocals and and um, complex rhythms. Um, so that that's kind of how um, Afro Afro beats are are defined as you do research on it and everything else. Now Afro beats is becoming extremely, like I said earlier, extremely popular, and it's even making headway in the United States, a very very difficult market to break into. Um, you know, especially if you're an international person and you're coming in trying to break into the American market, um, it's it's a very difficult market to break into. Um, you know, they I can tell you now, you will be far fetched to listen to a lot of Afro beats on the American radio waves. Um, and, and that's how the majority of music still today, um, it's being challenged by the internet and social media, but still predominantly it's radio waves um, that, that, you know, promote um, um, music in America. So nonetheless, but even now Afro beats are making way um, Afro pop is making its way through um, the American um, music industry. In fact, uh, just the recent, this past year, um, the the Grammys, um, which is you know America's highest accolade, um, has awarded a category called Afro pop. You know, so um, it is definitely a an emerging category. It's an emerging musical sound. It's certainly way larger in the rest of the world than it is in America, particularly Western civilization. But obviously, it's really big in African countries. It's really big in Europe and Western civilization. It's really big in, big in London. I mean, Afropop has changed the entire musical landscape of London um, in a dramatic way. The same way house music changed the musical landscape in England um, as well. And it just so happens that I... The, the genres that I gravitate to the most, um, particularly in Europe and London um, and, and England, um, house music has changed the musical landscape in London and Afro pop has changed the musical landscape in London. And, you know, I, I, I want to say, uh, so let me give you some artists. Um, and in addition and conjunction with this post, um, if you check my storyboard on Facebook, um, I have posted um, a lot of Afro beats musicians and their songs. Their songs are posted on there, and then I've also posted uh, a lot with this in conjunction with this this um, soapbox. I have uh, posted um, a lot of Afro beats artists, and then a lot of dancehall reggae artists, and then um, some house music artists. Just so that you can get a, a sound for um, the music that I'm most drawn to. Um, so anyways, that's that's kind of how Afro beats are defined, right? Um, like I said, American and the American Grammys, we have a new category for it. And some of the Afro beats artists that I have come to really enjoy um, and have purchased music, music from are Papa Sape, um, uh, Shwalaban, Burner Boy, Tyler, and um, uh, Davido. 
Now, Dyla is the the artist who um, who is really changing, and the, like they call her the new face of Afropop. Um, like Fila Kuta would have been the face of Afropop um, from the '60s on. Um, they're giving that title to a woman named Thyla, who's actually from South Africa, not Nigeria or Ghana, which is where Nigeria and Ghana has been given a lot of um, um, credit for a lot of the Afropop music that is being put out there today. Um, but as I stated earlier, there, there are tons of areas of Africa that are producing Afropop music and um, getting it out there. So I don't like to say it's just Nigerian. And the perfect example is the young lady, Thyla, who actually happened to win the Grammy this year um, um, for in the Afropop category. And Thyla actually is a bad bitch. Excuse my language, but that bitch is bad. Like, I mean, we're talking Rihanna, Beyonce bad. That bitch is bad. Like, um, I mean, I'm, and, and what is reported in Rolling Stones and in other articles is this woman, Thyla. Um, and I don't know if I can say that about her, um, uh, as far as being, you know, the, the next Rihanna, the next Beyonce. I, I don't know if I can say that. What I can say is I certainly have purchased a lot of her music. Um, and her album that has just recently dropped is pretty dope. Um, all of it is true to form as far as what, what categorize, categorizes the genre of Afro pop. And, you know, straight up, I'm a fan. Plus, the bitch looks good as fuck. Like, I mean, damn. That bitch, I mean, oh my God. That woman is, she's a good looking girl. Like, she's a real good looking girl. I, I can tell you right now, some of these light-skinned sisters uh, are, are definitely bringing light-skinned people back into style. Um, you know, I mean, I, I definitely love, you know, some of these other artists. I mean, um, Papa Sape, he's a good looking dude. Um, uh, uh, Burner Boy. That's a good looking dude. Like, I mean, these are, and, and they have a a swag about them that, you know, promotes alpha male, like, right? So, I mean, hell yeah, like, dope. I'm all about that, right? Like, good looking dudes, whatever else. But this female, she's a bad bitch. That's all I can say. I mean, that's that, that's that, that Lizzo, Megan Thee Stallion, Cardi B term, bad bitch. Well, this is a bad bitch and she knows it and her music is dope i mean it's really really dope and i i like i said i posted her stuff in in the story and i would recommend or suggest or 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 plug um going ahead and listening to a couple of her songs and see what you like i particularly like water i particularly like safer i particularly like um last um at last or something last um, so, I mean, those are some of the songs that I particularly like by Tyla. Um, Burner Boy, like I said, I, I posted all this in, in, in the stories, um, their, their music. So check the stories as you listen to this, um, to this, um, Soapbox Slam. So, I mean, that's, that's Afro Beats, right? Now, um, now I'll, I'll say, we're going to talk a little bit about Reggae Dance Hall. Reggae Dance Hall, um, is a genre of Jamaican popular music, right? Um, uh, reggae emerged in the 1970s, uh, made most popular by Bob Marley, um, and and reggae uses you know complex rhythms, chanting calls, and um, percussions to to define its genre as well. What also makes reggae music extremely interesting, and particularly with reggae, is reggae uses um, uh, Jamaican standard English, right, and then. An offset of reggae or an offshoot that came out of reggae is what is more popular today, which we call dance hall, right? And and dance hall is again a genre of Jamaican popular music. Um, it, it 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 is sparsely, you know, um, come it sparsely comes out of reggae, but it has much faster rhythms for dancing. I mean, it's it's really dance driven, hence the name dance hall. Um, it has much faster rhythms and dance hall uses Jamaican Patois and that's just a, a Jamaican dialect or Jamaican style of, of, of language um, and, and it uses Jamaican Patois right and um, as, a, as a phonic sound as, as a sound um, that I hear um, with different artists um, 
there's a lot of hard pronunciations and a lot of hard enunciations. And then there's a lot of lazy word execution, right? Um, bruh, bruh, you know, those kind of sounds to me are very um, aggressive, masculine sounds to me, right? And so when I hear, like, um, in dance hall, when I hear um, Jamaican male artists speak, to me, it, it sounds more masculine to me. It sounds more... Um, just it, more bravado to me, more masculine to me. Um, so it's a sound that when I hear um, musically men s sound like that, to me it's um, it, it's to me it's more attractive. It's 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 more desirable. Um, I don't like soft sounds um, out of men. I like soft sounds that come out of women. And you know, I, I think that um, when it comes to Jamaican patois and um, Jamaican language, um, uh, Jamaican, even Jamaican English and Jamaican men, where they come from, the, um, linguistically, you know, the, there's a whole science behind all this and, you know, how the jaw is formed and, and all this other stuff that, that influence how people speak or how clearly they speak or, or whatever the case may be, right? There's a whole science behind it. Whether it's true or not, who knows? Um, but I would say that like African music and African male artists, Jamaican music and Jamaican male artists, to me, even the female artists, actually, to me, um, um, A, I think Jamaican uh, musicians are more authentic to African musicians, um, but um, I, guess, I, I, I don't know, it's just, it, there's a certain tone and sound and, and reggae and dancehall that I particularly like. I don't speak a lot of patois, um, and when I speak to other friends and why they like or dislike, you know, reggae music and dance hall, it has a lot to do with the fact that they don't understand what they're saying, and I get that. But for me, musically, I am not necessarily always drawn to music based on lyrics. I'm drawn to music on those three simple, on three simple principles. That's chanting vocals, or lyrically, can I, lyric um chorus lines that are very lyrically catching or um in, in, enticing or, or inviting so that calls to me so chanting vocals call to me uh, complex rhythms are really important to me as far as what i'm drawn to listening to um i like ups and downs and and i like a journey in in my phonetic and my musical composition and um ups and downs and 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 those changes in patterns and, and, and musicality, right? Um, instrumental instrumentation, I, I, that I really, really like. So when they say complex rhythms, I love how those things change. Even with classical music, I like the kind of cast classical music, musical compositions that kind of go up and, and down and up and down and they change and, and, and everything else. You know, na 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 I mean, that would be a definition of like a complex rhythm, right? You're going, -na 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 right? That that kind of complex composition to me is is fantastic, right? Um, not some sort of mo melodic. The only kind of melodic driving thing that I like is from percussions. I don't really like it from uh, uh, a a. I'm not I'm not a fan of it from a, a let's say. Uh, a uh, violin. I, I, if a violin is going to play, it's got to go up. It's got to go down, and those those changes have to happen rather relatively rapidly. Even with um, uh, guitars, I don't like a, a, a steady guitar sound. I, I I like it to go up and down and up and down. So the complex rhythms are very important to me as far as what I'm drawn to, what I what I would turn to or go to, and then percussions. I I love all percussions. I, I mean, I'm just big on percussions right um so these are the kind of three things that the three commonalities within um my genres my go-to genres now like i said i love all genres but i will point out that even in all genres let's take rock for example phil collins right rock musician soft rock however you want to define them love i i love a lot of phil collins songs number one i like a lot of his music because of the drums he played the drums right but like in the air tonight, I mean that song and that drum, the drums that he uses in that song is just it it, it it just resonates in my body, right? 
Phil Collins in the air tonight. There's a couple of um, Phil Collins songs that even when he was an independent artist and when he was with the group Genesis, um, there are songs that kind of revert to this formula of chanting vocals, complex rhythms, and percussions. And those are the particular songs in those genres, like rock or whatever you would classify Phil Collins as, that I am most drawn to. Um, again, it's not to say that I don't like all these other genres. I'm just specifying, in fact, I, I like all genres of music and I love the, the, the different executions and genres. Um, it's just that these particular three genres um, really call to me more and they stick to more of a basic formula that I love to hear the most. Um, so, and, and, that, and anyway, so that's reggae and dancehall. I will say that um, on, on, on a whole, the majority of music that I gravitate to the most is really rooted in a lot of positivity. It's also rooted in what I call high, fre high frequency, high vibration. Um, whether the high frequency and high vibration comes from the musicality or whether the high frequency, high vibration comes from the chanting vocals. It's usually one or the other or both that um, really draw me to draw me in and draw me to that, that style of music. Um, and, 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 you know, when it comes to reggae dance hall, I would say with that particular reggae, it's all three. It would be the chanting vocals in reggae. It would be the, um, the complex rhythms, and then it would be the, the percussions, right? But with dance hall, um, the unfortunate thing with dance hall is, and I love dance hall, dance hall can be very, um, lascivious, raunchy, um, heavily sexually oriented. And, and that, again, like it is in American hip hop style music and everything else, that can be a turnoff to me. The, the, um, I, I don't like a lot of overt sexuality. I do love sexuality. Don't get me wrong. I, I love sexuality a lot. Um, I like sexual expression a lot. I mean, I, I really like sexual expression, but I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> I like a little discretion in my life. You know what I mean? I want to do it. I just don't want to talk about it. And I certainly don't want it blatantly out there, right? Um, and, and, and freaky sex, right? Like, I like that. I just don't want to talk about it. <laughs> and, 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 you know, I, I mean, for lots of reasons, I don't want to talk about it. it makes other people uncomfortable. Um, whatever the case may be, makes me uncomfortable. Like I said, I like it. I just don't want to talk about it. And the blatantness of overt sexuality in, in, in dance hall can be really raunchy and explicit just like it just like it I mean I say can be and there's a lot of it in dance hall in today's American music hip-hop music and everything else it is beyond blatant it's just basically no class all out there sex 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 and it's a major major turnoff so you know um, I would say that about dance hall, but the, the, and even in American music, the rhythms and the chanting vocals are, um, um, kind of compensate for that for me. Um, and so dance hall can be raunchy, just like American hip hop and R&B can be very raunchy. I just, uh, choose to, um, enjoy the, the, the rhythms and, and, and the complex rhythms of, of dance hall more than I enjoy it out of hip hop. Uh, personal preference, I do like hip hop. It's just uh, I prefer Jamaican reggae dance hall more than than American hip hop. Now, having said that, a lot of people that I know don't want to really gravitate towards reggae dance hall. They don't understand the patois, um, and they don't hear the words, and so they're not really drawn to it. Um, but I would say the same thing for me about hip hop music and rap music. A lot of times, like, I don't hear Biggie Smalls. I hear Tupac way more lyrically. I hear Tupac way more, and I can delineate and distinguish his words way more than I love Biggie. Uh, even with Jay-Z, like, I don't hear all of Jay-Z's words when he's rapping and everything else. I don't hear it. I, I know tons of people who can hear every freaking word that he says. I just don't hear it. So, like people who say they don't want to listen to reggae, because they can't hear what they're saying or understand the language patois. Um, I say reggae, but I really mean dancehall. Um, similarly, I would say the same thing for me about 
um, hip hop. I don't hear a lot of the words, and so it's very hard for me to understand the lyrics. So I, I love Biggie, but I love Biggie because of the beats, the complex rhythms. Um, you know, there's not a lot of percussion, the drum run, there, there's a driving drum run, but it's not distinct in the sense of a, a drum. It's, it's more bass, right? We're talking bass as opposed to a percussion. Um, which is slightly different. Um, they do, the, they have a similar same effect, but totally different execution and sound. Um, and I prefer the actual sound of a percussion. I enjoy bass, but I prefer an actual sound and percussion. Um, so, you know, like I get that argument that, you know, a lot of people don't listen to reggae because of, they can't hear the words, but to me, all music isn't really about all of the lyrics chanting vocals or the chorus yes um for me chorus is important to everything um and, and musically what i will listen to what i like i love the chorus but um as far as lyrics i have an ability or will be willing to listen to french music i don't speak french spanish music i don't i mean i can speak some spanish but i don't speak all these other languages but I'm more willing to listen to the music because I don't need to hear the words. I need to feel the chorus. I need to feel the the, the musical instrumentation, and and I need to feel the the rhythm. And if I can feel those things, then I think I can interpret or intuitively, emotionally feel what the lyrics are are trying to say. You know, um, and, and so it's not a criteria for me to be able to understand all of the lyrics. Um, but it is frustrating, and I get that. Um, when it comes to house music, um, I'm going to talk about this. Again, this will be a long post. I haven't done a post in a while, but this is about music and why I'm drawn to these three particular genres and a plug for Afrobeats. Um, and I think that I'd like to expose Afrobeats and put other people on to, to listen to Afropop, uh, particularly in the African-American community, and start supporting Afropop. Um, because it's really positive music. But let me get to house music real quick and then I'll make some other comments and start to wrap this up. But um, uh, I, uh, I love house music. I've always loved house music. Um, I'm from Chicago. Um, you know, Chicago is one of the, 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 the cornerstones of house music, uh, Chicago and New York. And I happen to live in both Chicago and New York and have been 100% a part of, um, totally grew up with the emergence of house music. Um, what what defines house music a lot is again chanting vocals, complex rhythms and percussion. Um, and, and what makes house music so unique and, and, and the most American kind of style, right? And and this is what's also I'm finding in Afro pop and what I I find in um, urban culture, which I love about urban culture. I love what we contribute musically to a lot of things. Um, and it's what I like about house music. House music takes, so the chanting vocals that occur in most house music, especially traditional old school house, it takes chanting vocals. So you can take any song, whether it's a popular song or a song specifically designed to be a house track, right? And in the day when it emerged, you took old music, whether it was disco or whatever else, and you took the chorus line of those old, old, old songs and you, you know, you, you made a clip. Like we talk about, you know, editing today. You take a clip. We're, we're kind of in house music. It's like a, a, a musical edit, right? You take a, a, a clip of a chorus, um, usually some old, old R&B song or something like that. Um, it doesn't have to be an old R&B song, though. I mean, there's been a lot of rock songs where you've taken the chanting vocal, the, the clip of the chorus. You clip that. And then you you sample and you clip different beats. You combine it together and you add some new percussions to it. And you have a driving, you have a, you, you're basically orchestrating or conducting like a musical conductor. You're, you're or, or a composer, a musical composer. As a DJ, you're composing by, by picking pieces from different things and compiling it into something new. You're composing a new execution of music usually aimed to get people to dance right um and and that's what how you know how you're creating house music or how house music really emerged 
And and I again, it follows a formula that I'm most drawn to, where you take chanting vocals, you take um, uh, chanting vocals, you take um, complex rhythms, and you use percussions, and you execute music that way. And that's kind of what house music does. So, like I said, um, I'm drawn to those three particular genres. And as I was doing this research and and looking at what defines these as genres, I noticed that the most common thread between these three um, genres that I'm most drawn to, it was chanting vocals, complex rhythms, and percussions. Um, now there are other things that uniquely define house, other things that you uniquely define um, uh, um, uh, dance hall uh, reggae, and then there's other things that define Afro pop. But as a general execution and explanation of the genres or why I'm drawn to or the common thread that has drawn me to those genres th those would be the common threads um, so let me backtrack a little bit um, I'm not gonna list off a bunch of names in house music house music has emerged um, you know in the 70s and 80s as well it's been around for a long time house music has completely changed the musical landscape everywhere everywhere United States Europe, Africa, China, Asia, everywhere. I mean, house music is uh, a, a genre of music that, um, and it has many subsects in house music that has infected our society. I say infected, it's a good infection um, and, 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 and affected our entire society. So, I mean, house music is here to stay. Um, and, 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 you know, I, I can only... Um, try to inspire other people to, to get get on to get onto house music and listen to what it is and, and and really enjoy house music. One of the best things that all three genres, whether it's reggae, and I'll lean more on the reggae side when I say this, but reggae, um, Afro beats, and and house music, it's generally rooted in something very positive. It's generally rooted in high frequency, high vibration. And when I say high frequency and high vibration, that is where instrumentation really plays a role with these particular genres. And the reason why I say that is of a lot of instruments, the bell and the drum, the bell, like a, a church bell, bell, whatever else, gong, um, uh, those instruments, the bell and the, the drum have the highest effect on high vibrations and high frequencies. They just do. Um, they're, they're very effective in manipulating frequencies, particularly within the body and particularly, yeah, particularly within the body. Um, high frequencies and high vibrations. Um, those two percussions, right? Um, and, and actually a lot of percussions are notoriously known for invoking high frequencies, high vibrations. Now, I'm, I may sound a little bit kooky right here when I talk about this, but when you're talking about your body's energy, chakras and things like that, uh, some people uh, ascribe and, and buy into that, some people don't. I particularly think there's a lot of validity in frequencies and vibrations within the human body. I think it is a, you know, metaphysics and, and, and a, a, one of the secrets to, um, to um, effective, healthy living. Um, I really do. Um, and I think that in conjunction with a lot of other things, I think it's one more important thing that we need to pay attention to when it comes to our health and our body is are we getting the right frequencies and vibrations into our body and then what what it, what in our what in our environment are blocking um, frequencies and vibrations from the immediate environment like telephone poles or electric poles to um, you know toxic water and everything else all of these things toxic food all of these things can do things to block our vibrations, our frequencies, our electrons in our body, our neutrons in our body, the, the, the cosmic forces within our body are affected by all of this. And music um, has proven to be effective in manipulating and changing frequencies and vibrations. Uh, even a, a tuning fork um, is a phenomenal tool that people should have to help increase and, and, and create high vibrations and high frequencies. So these three particular genres usually tend to combine very positive high vibrations and, and frequencies. 
And when it comes to vocals, um, it, it requires a, a very gifted vocal sound to really effectively um, manipulate frequencies and vib vibrations through vocals. However, it can be done and it is done, um, but it is very, very hard. The, the thing about voc vocality and lyrics is words and and attitudes and words and used and, and things like that can um, trap certain frequencies and vibrations within your body. And that's where I get into, you know, overt sexuality and, and, and a lot of music, even dancehall, even though I love dancehall, but hip hop music, especially hip hop music today, like WAP and Cardi B and, and, and you know, trap music today, um, I think is very dangerous music. Um, not just because it's overt sexuality, but it's execution of lyrics, I think, are, are not very healthy and positive. And I don't think they have good effects on the body. Um, and that's why I'm not drawn to it as much. Um, I think there's a lot more positivity in the language used in, in, in reggae music or in dancehall music than in hip hop today. Um, and I, use, I do say hip hop today because, um, you know, back in the day, hip hop was a lot more conscious. So um, the conscious, the use of language to be conscious in language and very um, conscious messaging um, was effective and positive. And, and back in that time, when I grew up with hip hop and, and those things, that actually was effective. And I really did enjoy when I could hear the lyrics, the conscious messages that you would hear in hip hop in the 80s and 90s so you know that's a little a little thing about that but um i, I wanted to talk about that aspect now what 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 pers what 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 inspired this entire soapbox um it was afro beats and afro music and more what inspired it was <laughs> um this past weekend i was washing my truck and vacuuming out the inside and you know american culture right like you know Americans all have to call attention to themselves, right? And I'm guilty of the same thing. I'm definitely going to call attention to myself. If I'm going to wash my truck at the car wash, I'm going to roll down my music. I mean, roll down my windows and blast my music and, and call attention to myself. It's no different than the loud motorcycles that boom, boom, boom through, the, through, through, through town and, and call attention to themselves or no different than, you know, people who have super bass systems in their vehicles and they roll around through town and it's blasting and their truck is rattling. It's no different than that. And it's no different than the than the redneck honky talk white boys that jack up their trucks and, and put all these loud mufflers on their truck and call all this attention as they vroom vroom through the town. It's all the same. No matter pink, white, blue, black, whatever, it's an American cultural thing that we do. And I do it too. And so I say all that to say, um, I was washing my truck and like I said, I've been really into Afrobeats in the last two years. I've been buying a lot of Afrobeats music and I know for a fact that a lot of people don't know about Afrobeats. So I deliberately played my, oh, I didn't, not just because I was at the car wash, I was in an Afrobeats mood when I was listening to my music. And so I deliberately turned my music up and rolled down my windows and opened all my doors as I was vacuuming, calling attention to myself. And sure enough, this guy comes over to me and he's like, hey man, you Jamaican or something? And I'm like, no, but, um, you know, I, I, I do like Jamaican music or whatever else. He said, but you're listening to Afrobeats. And I, I, I kind of lit up. I was like, yeah, uh, you know about Afrobeats. Like, and I mean, I just, I, cause you know, I, I'm, I'm, it's a new genre, I'm relatively new to me in the past two years, but it's not a very popular genre in, in the United States. And I'm like, yeah, man, oh man. And I grabbed my phone and I'm like, yeah, look at my catalog. Like I'm really into Afrobeats. I, I'm into reggae, I'm into Afrobeats, I'm into dancehall and I'm into house music, you know, and I'm sitting here just talking to this guy, getting to know him and everything else. And, and he, you know, I think he's, he's like, oh, wow, look at this guy. Like, he's actually really into, and he has a catalog of music and, um, that, that you know, that, I, that, is, that calls to him. So this guy is, happens to be from Africa, and this guy happens to make uh, Afro beats, uh, uh, African pop music. And, you know, I was shocked. He's like, yeah, man. And that's what he says to me. He's like, man, if you like Afrobeats, like, dude, let me put you on. Like, he's like, this is what I do. And I'm like, what you do? What you mean what you do, right? 
and he's like, I make Afro beats. Like I'm an Afro beats musician. Like, like I'm legit. I'm like, okay, you legit, right? And so I'm like, okay, what's your stuff? Like, and I, I tried to give, I have my phone right there and I'm like, okay. Now I didn't have any internet service, but I'm like, okay, let me, let me see. I'm like, where can I get your music, right? I'm like, where am I gonna find your music? I'm gonna find out iTunes. He's like, man, he's like, dude, you're gonna find my music everywhere. You're gonna find it on iTunes. You're gonna find it on Spotify. You're gonna find it on Pandora. Like, I'm legit. Like, you're gonna find my music. I, I'm, I'm, I'm legit. Like, I make music. This is what I do. And I'm like, okay, okay, okay. I'm all right. Well, I said, I'm, I can't get internet right now, but um, I was like, what's your name? Let me write it down. Because as soon as I get internet or as soon as I get to a place where my phone is working, I'm going to look you up. Because you said I can get you on iTunes, so I'm going to listen to your stuff. And he wasn't worried. He was not worried one iota, right? I was like, oh, wow. I mean, he was definitely confident. He knew, he knew who he was, right? And lo and behold, so we part ways, you know, it was great to meet him. It was great chatting with him. We talked about a lot of different things. And um, lo and behold, I get to a place where I can download internet, or not download internet, but I have internet service. And I look up his name and I get him on iTunes and dude, brother man has a catalog. I'm like, wow, I legit met this cat who makes Afro beats, right? And I'm really into Afro beats right now. I mean, legit, totally legit. So I ended up downloading like, you know, three or four of his songs. Um, his name is Papa Sape. Um, and it loosely translated, that's, that means Dapper Don, um, you know, uh, uh, Daddy Dapper, right? Papa Sape, Daddy Dapper. He's like, yeah, I, when we were talking, he's like, yeah, I, don't, I know I don't look like anything right now. You know, I'm just dressed like washing my truck, but he's like, you know, I'm usually, I'm usually done done, right? <laughs> I, was, I was laughing, you know, I was like, yeah, I have some, I was like, look at this brother. I mean, African brother, no matter what, you know, <laughs> definitely going to make sure they look good, right? Um, and, and, um, and yeah, so, that, you know, his name, Papa Sape. Nonetheless, I was able to download, I, I downloaded like three of his songs. One was like, Move On. Um, uh, another one was like, um, Talawan. And then another one was like, um, Do That. And I ended up buying all three of those, those songs. I mean, he had a lot of, a lot to choose from. He's been making music the last two or three years. And, you know, I, I, I from what I can tell, this is a, a young man who probably will make a lot of hits and um, be in the game for a while. Uh, excuse me. Uh, uh, excuse me. So, um, so yeah. So you know, let me say that you know, Afro beats is why I got on my soapbox. Um, I'm really into Afro beats. Um, you know, and and I really wanted to to introduce or put other people on to uh, another genre that is emerging and expand their musical horizon. Um, I, I think it's very unfortunate when people are so rigid in their musical taste and they refuse to listen to anything else. I think it's a sign of um, their inability to have empathy for anything else other than themselves. And I, I don't think that's a, a very healthy um, a healthy way of being a, a fellow human being. I just don't think it's very healthy. Yes, you can have preferences, but I think if you're unwilling to expand your musical palette and, and horizon, and your musical repertoire uh, and catalog, um, I, I think that it's it's really a, a a sign of your character, and I don't think that's really good character, um, personally. Um, you know, some of the 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 reggae artists are by artists. So I'm going to mention this, and then um, I'm going to get into I'm going to start to tie this up. There's a few caveats that I want to talk about musically and talking about these genres. And, and, and things that I think are note, note worthy, like footnote worthy, right? Um, some reggae dancehall artists are Kali Buds, Coffee, Putu Banju, um, Vibe Cartel, Papkan, Sean Paul, Mavado, and Junior Reed. Now, of all those artists, I can tell you Buji Bantu, Papkan, um, Vibe Cartel, Junior Reed, and Mavado are my ultimate favorites. Um, Kali Buds and, and Sean Paul are definitely very popular, definitely, you know, make dancehall music and very catchy stuff. But what I have noticed, and this is why I'm going to start to wrap this up, but what I'm, what I'm noticed in, with, 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 with Afro beats and, and dancehall and in our society, and this is a part where I think a lot of you guys will start to tune me out because you don't want to believe, 
um, the things that I'm about to say. Um, you, you are ignorantly, willfully ignorant and comfortable in that. And that's okay. But these are real realities or, or things that I, that make you go, hmm. Um, now, some of the things that make me go hmm about all of this. Uh, I'll go back to Afrobeats. The young lady, Tyla, um, won the Grammy in the United States. Now, Tyla is a beautiful girl. I mean, she is beautiful. And I love Afrobeats. And I can tell you that there are probably three or four songs that she has put out that are really good. I mean, I think really, really good. Um, and, and so I, I think she's a real talent. Um, and she's a real talent in the industry. But, you know, Dyla is a, a very fair skinned woman. She is a woman. And I do think that there is something to be said about um, Western civilization accepting minority, black minority, because it's not really with the other minority groups. It's particularly with black people um, are much more willing to accept a black woman, whether she's a beautiful Jezebel or she's the Aunt Jemima. Um, <laughs> or the beautiful Jezebel or the Mammy, um, <clears throat> Western civilization is willing to accept, promote, and empower the Jezebel or the Mammy. But I do not get a feeling, especially um, with darker skinned black males in American society, Western civilization, and musically, um, that the black male <clears throat> is promoted and rewarded now you may say what are you talking about Sean Jay-Z won a Grammy or this person won a Grammy or da 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 like all the black men who won Grammys da 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 that's not the every black man that has won a Grammy every black man that has been promoted in our society the only one that is unscathed so far is Barack Obama they uh, uh, Bill Cosby Sean Combs uh, Arthur uh, all of these men have been torn down and why am I saying this and why did this turn this way um, I feel like Tyler while very good has been rewarded I actually think that Burner Boy deserves the Grammy um, he's a Nigerian Afropop musician he's made a lot of music and I pretty much own a lot of his music um, and if I were to compare the two Burner Boy has way more albums um, he has way more music that has been put out there and I like a lot more of his music. So it puzzles me why this one first time out kind of woman that barely anybody knows in the United States um, has <clears throat> been crowned the queen and awarded a Grammy this year over uh, a more proven Afropops musician. Um, it, it's just puzzling to me. And, and, and again, it, it may sound a bit conspiratory, but I do think that there is something to the fact that the fact that she's a woman versus rewarding a black man, especially in a new genre. Um, it, it's just, it just seems really bizarre to me. Um, I want to talk about colorism because again, Tyler is a very fair skinned, um, woman, but uh, Sean Paul and Kali Buds are also very fair, fair, fair skinned um, men, Kali Buds and, and Sean Paul when it comes to dance hall. And they are promoted the most in, um, in, in American music, right? And, and internationally, they're promoted the most. Um, and, you know, they're more appealing to white America or British European America. But technically, the, the real talent in the music lies in people like um, Movado. It lies in people like Junior Reed. It lies in people like Bujubantu. And those men are very African, strong, black features. Even though they're Jamaican, I say African. They have very African, strong, black features. They, they have very strong dialects um, and enunciations and phonic sounds um, that are very, very, very black male. And... Um, for whatever reason, they're not promoted. Even though when I listen to their catalog of music, 
uh, way more successful music, way more meaningful music than what Kali Buds or Sean Paul has put out. So it's very interesting to me. So there, I think there's a lot of colorism in our society. A good examples of that does occur in, in Afrobeats. It's occurring in in um, in in in, in um, reggae music and everything else. And again, I think that has a lot to do, and, and that, that has a lot to do with the imaging and who's in power. And let's let's not forget, and when it comes to musically, even in England and in in this country, in, in the United States and Europe, let, let's not let's not forget that Ashkenazi Jews in Hollywood and in music have defined the image of um of what is desirable in 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 all of this um they're the ones who have been in control they're the ones that put out the music um in the united states and what it's going to sound like and and how it's going to how it's going to be executed and and they're the ones that are funding that they're the ones that are putting that image out they're the ones that are endorsing and co-signing this behavior that we have in america by cardi b and and megan the stallion and blue face and all this other stuff they co-sign for this they endorse this they 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 write the checks they they put it out there the ashkenazi jews this is the image of us that they are in control of we don't have control of our own imaging because we don't own those instruments to ex, uh, distribute music and when we do try to own those instruments to distribute music they block us out um ashkenazi jews so you know um I think that, um, you know, I, I know that this whole kind of turned a little bit political in those statements, but I did want to point out that these are things that are that are very prevalent. Also, when you look up Afrobeats, it's always attributed as Nigerian um, influenced or Nigerian music or West African music. And I think that has a lot to do with the fact that Nigeria assimilated to colonial, British colonial rule. They assimilated very quickly and very, very obediently and in doing so they have access to um british markets and since they have access to british markets and british people uh have the ability to write the story and create the story and define the story because they're the winners of 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 the empire um nigeria benefits from that and so when we talk about where Afrobeats come from and when you research it and it's attributed to Nigerian or West African things, um, it, it, I think that has more to do with the fact of, of British influence than it is giving proper credit to all of the countries in Africa that have created the African sound and, and, and everything else. So um, I just wanted to make those, those few little points out there to, to, to think about. Um, you know, I may have turned some people off when it got a little more political towards the end of this, but the main thing here and the reason why I'm on my soapbox is to talk about Afrobeats and to plug it and to introduce other people to um, a new genre of music that I find to be very positive and, and um, um, really, really, really good music um, and, and, and would encourage people to, to start to download it and play it and listen to it. Um, uh, I'm a big supporter of Afro Beats. So that's what I'm on my soapbox about. Um, you guys have a wonderful day. Do an act of kindness. Be kind to people. Um, you know, um, and, 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 and try out some new music. Like I said, my peers, people I've gone to school with and, and high school, college, and, and, and you know, you white folks. <laughs> um, especially you white folks that have kids. <laughs> um encourage your kids to listen to some Afrobeats because the truth of the matter is Afrobeats is way more positive and and everything else than I think a lot of American hip-hop music today and I think it's the direction that American hip-hop music ought to go in um, as far as how music is composed and executed lyrically and um, instrument instrument instrumentation wise um, I, I think it's the direction that American music and um, African music ought to go in. So uh, that's what I'm on Soapbox about. You guys have a wonderful, wonderful day. Be kind. And um, yeah, thank you. Have a good day.